Assalamu alaikum. Before we dive deep into the periodontal pocket, let's for a moment think about the pocket we see in our day-to-day -day life. So let us suppose this is a man and he wanted a pocket in his coat, so he went to a tailor. So the normal depth of the pocket is somewhat like this, but let's imagine the tailor was a newbie and he gave him a pocket which was something like this. So when he kept anything inside, it would never be ready to come out of it. Unless, unless, we till this man this way <laughs> anyways similarly we also have a space between the teeth and the gingiva so i'm going to make a teeth here so let's suppose this is our teeth very healthy teeth indeed so this is our teeth and let us make gingiva so this is a gingiva okay all right so we have a space between this tooth and the gingiva and that is called as the gingival sulcus and theoretically it should be 0 mm but since nobody is disease free i'm not disease free you are not disease free so the normal clinically accepted sulcus depth is 2 to 3 mm 2 to 3 mm is the normal sulcus depth. Now, if this space gets deep enough because of the periodontal disease, it is called as the periodontal pocket. Or in other words, we can say that periodontal pocket is defined as pathologically deepened gingival sulcus. So, when this sulcus deepens pathologically, let us see if this gets deep enough okay so this is getting deep enough right so this is called as the periodontal pocket let me just erase all these things so this deepening could be due to two reasons let me show you here first of all our gingiva could be enlarged so if this is enlarged you can imagine that the sulcus depth is automatically it seems to increase because we are measuring from here to here. So this is increasing. So this is one kind uh, where we find that the depth is increasing and this is called as the gingival pocket. So this is called as the gingival pocket. Okay. And the second type is when the gingival attachment move apically. So let's say, let's say, let me try. So this is moving apically, apically. So this gingival attachment is moving apically. So here we find something which is called as the periodontal pocket. Periodontal pocket. So we have two kinds of pocket, gingival pocket and the periodontal pocket. Also, in the gingival pocket, there is no destruction of the underlying periodontal tissue. We are seeing that only this gingiva is increasing in bulk. So, there is no destruction of the underlying periodontal tissue. But in the periodontal pocket, there is destruction of the supporting periodontal tissue leading to loosening of the teeth and hence exfoliation. So, in periodontal pocket, we are going to have loosening, loosening, loosening and exfoliation of teeth right means the teeth will come out they'll fall off so the pocket is of two types gingival pocket and the periodontal pocket now the periodontal pocket is also of two types let us see how so here we have the alveolar bone suppose now when the base of the pocket so this is the base of the pocket it is coronal to the adjacent alveolar bone it means this is above this alveolar bone. This is called as the supra bony pocket. Supra bony pocket. Okay. Now let's suppose the alveolar bone was something like this. So it was something like this now. Now the base of pocket is apical to this. So it is below compared to the level of the alveolar bone now. So this kind of pocket, this kind of periodontal pocket. It is called as the infra, infra bony pocket. So we have two kinds of 
periodontal pocket. One is the supra bony and the other one is the infra bony. Pockets can also involve one, two or three surfaces of teeth and there can also be a spiral furcation areas. So let me try to show it. So let's change. So the pocket could involve one surface, for example, let's say this surface or it could also involve other surfaces, let's say this surface, so two surfaces involved now and similarly three or the entire surfaces could be involved, right? Pockets could also be spiral. By this I mean that the pocket will start on one surface of tooth and then it will proceed to some other surface like this. So this kind of pocket is called as the spiral pocket that is originating on one tooth surface and twisting around the tooth to involve one or more additional surfaces. So this could also go there and involve this surface too. Now the question arises how the periodontal pocket actually forms. So first of all we'll see the normal condition, normal condition and then we'll proceed to the abnormal condition. So in normal condition so this is my gingiva and we have this bone here all right and then we also have let me draw some blood vessels so these are the blood vessels so in normal conditions a constant stream of neutrophils they emigrate from this vessel so let me draw one broad vessel here so this is my thicker vessel and we have a neutrophil inside okay many neutrophils actually so these neutrophils they emigrate from the vessel they'll come out of the vessel they'll come here and they will reach the sulcus but how do they know that they have to reach the sulcus this is by the chemotactic agents so chemo chemotactic agents we know that we have some sort of uh, plaque in this area right so this plaque has bacteria inside bacteria inside and these bacteria they produce substances that chemotactically attract the neutrophil so they produce chemotactic agents and these for example let's say this is the chemotactic agent they are producing so this black thing it will attract the purple thing here so they are attracting, they are calling it towards themselves. So the neutrophil will emigrate the blood vessel and will go into the sulcus. So under normal conditions, the transmigrating cells, they leave no trace of their passage. Means they do not cause any kind of damage. So in the normal condition, they do not, not damage. Okay. So these neutrophils, these are the primary line of defense around the teeth and the epithelial barrier we have here this epithelial barrier it is the second line of defense now let's see what happens in abnormal condition so let's erase everything so we'll see what happens in abnormal condition or when we have the plaque which is more in quantity and it extends subgingivally so we have a lot of plaque here so this will cause an increase in the number of transmigrating neutrophil. So our vessel is here. Now more than, now more number of neutrophils will transmigrate. So all these will transmigrate now. This could be because of the increase in the chemotactic agents. Because we have more bacteria here. So they will produce more chemotactic agents. Alright. So they will attract them more. So the neutrophils, they will adhere to the lining of the blood vessel and migrate into the connective tissue so from here they are going into the connective tissue and from the connective tissue they are going outside and they will accumulate in the region of the plaque the subgingival plaque so what they do here they limit further extension and spread of bacteria so they limit further further extension of the extension of the bacteria by phagocytosis and killing so we have a constant battle which is occurring at the neutrophil plaque interface they are fighting with each other who wins we'll see and if the bacteria wins we'll have the pocket 
so when we have so many uh, neutrophils here and they travel from this direction towards the sulcus area they will kind of you know uh, disrupt the membrane here or the epithelial barrier here so this causes ulceration which is the second major event in the pocket formation so now our epithelial barrier has broken epithelial barrier has broken broken so when the epithelial barrier is broken this chemotactic agents they are no longer uh, acting so the neutrophils will not be guided into the sulcus area now what will happen instead is the neutrophils will accumulate in the connective tissue so they'll start accumulating the connective tissue because they do not have the guidance to move in the sulcus now these neutrophils will get activated and they will undertake phagocytosis here only and uh, they will release lysosomal enzymes collagenases and they will cause extensive tissue damage so here we will have extensive extensive tissue damage damage if this barrier is not reestablished tissue destruction continues and alveolar bone is resorbed and then a pocket is formed so we came to know that the connective tissue including the gingival fibers which are just you know apical to the junctional epithelium we have some gingival fibers uh, just apical they also are disrupted and the area is occupied by inflammatory cells and edema let me just clear all these things so when the collagen is lost the apical cells of the junctional epithelium so these are the apical cells they will uh, proliferate along the root extending finger like projections something of something like this and the coronal portion of the junctional epithelium the coronal portion of the junctional epithelium it will detach from the root so we have the apical portion migrating downwards and we have the coronal portion detaching from above so this will be seen in the junctional epithelium now the extension of the junctional epithelium along the root it requires the presence of healthy epithelial cells so if these cells are not healthy this migration will not occur so if there is degeneration or necrosis of this area then the pocket formation will reduce and this occurs in necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis um which result in an ulcer and not in pocket formation so in necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis we have ulcer and not pocket formation because the junctional epithelium is not um healthy here so there is no extension of uh, these cells towards the root instead there is ulceration so this was a brief about the periodontal pocket in the next video we'll study the treatment of periodontal pocket and if you have any questions you can comment below and i'll make sure to reply thanks for watching allah hafiz